The Vatican officially recognized the state of Palestine on Wednesday in a historic treaty. The Vatican had already welcomed a 2012 move by the United Nations to recognize a Palestinian state. It has been unofficially referring to that state for over a year. But today's treaty marks the first legal document negotiated between the Vatican and the Palestinians, and it constitutes official diplomatic recognition. The treaty comes days before Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas is scheduled to visit Pope Francis at the Vatican. The Israeli Foreign Ministry said it was disappointed by the Vatican's decision to recognize a Palestinian state. It said in a statement that the move does not promote the peace process. A passenger train carrying 238 people derailed in Philadelphia on Tuesday evening, killing six and hospitalizing over 200. Eight people are in critical condition. Seven carriages of the Washington to New York Amtrak service were crushed as they turned on their side. Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter said it was an absolute disastrous mess and that he had never seen anything like it in his life. The cause of the derailment is unknown, although a track defect or wheel failure may be to blame. Emergency services and firefighters are still looking for trapped passengers in the wreckage. A higher casualty toll is possible, as not all those aboard the train have been accounted for. The Pentagon is considering sending United States military aircraft and ships to assert freedom of navigation around artificial islands in the disputed South China Sea. Defense Secretary Ash Carter requested options that included sending the ships within 12 nautical miles of the artificial reefs China has been creating in the Spratly Island chain. China's foreign affairs spokesperson, Hua Chengying, responded critically to the remarks. The U.S. side should make a clarification on this issue. China has long been supporting the freedom of navigation in the South China Sea, but the freedom of navigation doesn't mean foreign military ships and aircraft can freely enter into another country's territorial airspace and seas. Cheng Ying also vowed that China would firmly maintain its territorial sovereignty. The European Commission forged ahead Wednesday with a controversial plan to introduce refugee quotas within European Union. According to the plan, the EU executive proposed taking in 20,000 refugees over two years and distributing them across Europe. It would see maximum refugee levels set for each country based on population, GDP and employment levels. Britain, Ireland and Denmark would receive an option to not accept any new immigrants. Assuming Britain does not take part in the proposal, Germany would take in the most migrants followed by France and Italy. The EU's executive commission sees the quota plan as key to forcing the EU countries to show solidarity with frontline partners like Italy, Greece and Malta. People now have a shorter attention span than goldfish, according to a study published by Microsoft Canada a few days ago. Goldfish are believed to have, on average, an attention span of 9 seconds, while, according to the study, many people today have an attention span of just 8 seconds. The decline in the ability to concentrate is caused by the increased use of gadgets and screen-based technology, the researchers say. The same study also found that a growing number of people are displaying addiction-like behaviors with their devices. An Iranian official has warned the Saudi-led coalition targeting Yemeni rebels that attacking an Iranian aid ship bound for Yemen will spark a fire. General Masoud Jazayari, the deputy chief of staff, delivered the remarks on Iranian state TV on Tuesday. Iran says the ship is carrying food, medicine and tents, as well as reporters and rescue workers. It is expected to arrive at a Yemeni port city next week. The U.S. and Saudi Arabia have accused Iran of arming the Yemeni rebels, known as Houthis. Iran supports the rebels, but both Tehran and the Houthis deny it has provided weapons to them.